Hello. Today we have lesson 9. Continuous past tense, compound sentences, adjective clauses. Let's start. We start with the definition for this tense. This tense, continuous past, is used to show that something continued for some time in the past. The past continuous is made from the past tense of the verb to be and the ing form of the verb. So we have was, were, plus verb ing. The pronouns that came with this tense uh, are the same that came with all the other tenses, but the difference is in the auxiliary. So we have the following. I was walking. You were writing, he was playing, she was watching, it was raining, we were waiting, you were driving, they were studying. Let us take a look for this diagram. We have the continuous past tense in affirmative. So we have the subject plus was and were plus verb ing, and we have past continuous tense in the negative, and we have the subject was and were, plus not, plus uh, verb ing, and we have the following example, she was not sleeping when he came home, uh, or in the affirmative we have she was cooking all morning, and in yes no questions we have was where at the beginning of the sentence, plus the verb uh, sorry, plus the subject, and then uh, comes the verb, ing verb form. Was she sleeping when he came home? So these are the forms, the three forms that we can have continuous past tense. And in addition for yes, no questions, we have information questions, of course. So the patterns for the continuous past tense are the same for continuous present tense. The difference is that the tense of the verb to be is in the past. So instead of having is and are and um, we only have was and were. It is necessary to use time expressions in order to point to the time. Unless the time is mentioned in a previous sentence, Time phrases and clauses are used as well. So there is a need uh, to mention the time where uh, the action takes place in the past in order to make a difference between this tense and other tenses in the past. Uh, we can have uh, time phrases such as a certain time specified like yesterday at 9 a.m., last week at 9 a.m., uh, last week on Sunday, three years ago in May. So we need to specify the time where the action take place. We can have other uh, time expressions like always, constantly, at that time, in those days, all day, all evening, four hours. You can make uh, or pay attention for using always here. Always is used with uh, simple present tense, but here we also use it with uh, continuous past tense to refer to the accidents or the events that happened in the past, but they were taking a place at that time for a continued period of time. So in the affirmative, we can have sentences such as, at three o'clock yesterday, I was walking in the garden. So I have the time expression at the beginning of the sentence. I was talking to my neighbor when she told me about the fire that started across the street. So I have the time phrase here that starts with the when, uh, and I mentioned the time that happened where when I was talking to my neighbor. When I was talking to my neighbor, I was talking to her when she told me about the fire that started across the street. I was working in the garden all day yesterday. I was driving to work when I crashed my car. Uh, 
I mention, I just pay attention that I have used only the pronoun I, we can replace it with other pronouns as well or other names or nouns actually. So I can say he was watching a movie while I was flying to Dubai. Okay, so I can use other pronouns. With negative sentences, we have they weren't working in the garden all day yesterday. I wasn't driving to work when I crashed my car. And we have questions, the two types of questions. Yes, no questions like was he working in the garden three o'clock yesterday? Or when were you watching a movie? This is an information question and we use the information word when. Were they working in the garden all day yesterday? So I have the two types of questions here. Yes, no questions and information questions. I would like you to pay attention for this uh, timeline, al khat al zamani We mentioned in the previous, previous lesson, sorry, that we use time closes. The time closes that we used with simple past tense started with the close markers when and while and we also uh, studied close uh, closes that start with after and before so in this lesson with continuous past tense we have time closes that start with when and while but the difference is in the tense of the close with simple past tense we studied that while and when are followed by simple past tense as well but with the symbol but with the present sorry but with the continuous past tense it's different if we use while in order to express the time ex event where uh, it takes place we need to pay attention that while refers to the whole duration the whole period of time so in this case it is a continuous activity that's why when you use while with the continuous past tense we use it plus continuous past tense so the tense of the time close when it starts with while is continuous past tense but if the close starts with when the tense will be only simple past tense why because when refers to this to a specific period in the time in the past okay اي انه عندما نستخدم while كاداة بداية لعبارة زمنية علينا ان نضع في في يعني في في اعتبارنا ان while تشير الى الفترة الزمنية باكملها متى وقع الحدث خلال فترة زمنية معينة أي أن الزمن بعد وايل سوف يكون عبارة عن فترة زمنية كاملة مستمر فيها الحدث وبهذه الحالة يكون الزمن الذي يحتوي على وايل زمن ماضي مستمر أما عند استخدام العبارة الزمنية التي تبدأ بوين فالزمن بعد وين يكون ماضي بسيط لماذا؟ لأن when تستخدم للإشارة إلى نقطة زمنية في الماضي حدث فيها الفعل وبالتالي تكون يعني الدلالة when وما بعدها إلى نقطة في الماضي وليس للاستمرارية فنخلي في بالنا هذا الاختلاف الجملة الأصلية يكون زمنها ماضي مستمر هذا منتهي من عنده time expressions أو time closes عندي هنا العبارات الزمنية هو اللي راح يختلف عندي زمن بيها إذا كانت تبدأ بوايل راح يكون ماضي مستمر كذلك لأن هي أشارت إلى الفترة الزمنية بأكملها أما إذا كانت تبدأ بوين سيكون الزمن بعدها ماضي بسيط لأن وين تشير إلى نقطة زمنية في الماضي وليس إلى يعني مرحلة بأكملها هذا بعيدا عن الجملة الأصلية اللي قلنا إنها definitely will be in the past continuous tense Let us move for compound sentences. الجمل المركبة. What do we mean by compound sentences? We have studied how to connect sentences by using but, and, semicolon. 
But now we are going to join the two sentences in order to make one without any, uh, you know, repetition. Uh, so we are going to use the contents of the two sentences in one sentence. أي أننا بدل من أن نستخدم الجملتين بأكملهما للربط أو لنربط بينهما على العكس سوف يتم تغيير في سياق إحدى الجملتين عند دمجهما مع بعضهما متى تحصل هذه الحالة؟ When two sentences have different subjects فواعل مختلفة But the same predicates Predicates معناها التكملة ما تبقى من الجملة بعد الفاعل أو نقدر نسمي الخبر يعني إذا إحنا عندنا باللغة العربية قد تكون يعني قريبة لنا راح يكون عندي السبجكت هنا يمثل المبتدأ وبريديكيت يمثل الخبر آه, أوكي أو بقية الجملة So if the two sentences have the same predicates they are sometimes combined to make a compound sentence The predicate is reduced to the first auxiliary of the verb phrase. إذن سوف يتم تقليل الجملتان نستخدم الجملة الأولى كاملة لكن الجملة الثانية سوف يتم يعني نقدر نقول اختصارها وتقليل كلماتها إلى الأوكسيلاري الموجود في العبارة الفعلية. Okay. طبعا يوجد لدي طريقتان لدمج الجمل لتركيبهما بهذه الطريقة Sentences are combined with two and either هذا النوع من الجمل عندما يكون عندي الفعل مختلف بينما الخبر أو بقية الجملة متشابه تربط ب two أو either Two used with affirmative sentences الجمل المثبتة Jack was working in the dorm His roommate was working in the dorm. لاحظوا الصفاء المختلف بقية الجملة متشابهة. So I will get the following compound sentence. Jack was working in the dorm and his roommate was too. Either is used with negative sentences. If I say Jack didn't know about decorating. His roommate didn't know about decorating, so I can compound or combine these sentences to get a compound sentence like Jack didn't know about decorating and his roommate didn't either. Let's take a look for uh, at the following examples. Bill lives in a private room and George does too. His father visited him last week and his mother, mother did too. Pay attention. الجملة الرئيسية هنا عندي بها فعل رئيسي فقط الزمن مضارع بسيط فتلقائيا أنا ما عندي auxiliary كان بالجملة الثانية فليش خليت auxiliary؟ لأن القاعدة تقول الجملة الثانية تقلل إلى أول أوكسيلاري فيها، فأنا ما عندي أصلاً أوكسيلاري فاستخدمت فيرب تو دو، لأن هذا اللي هو أسويه مع زمن الماضي البسيط والمضارع البسيط. فبالجملة الأولى والثانية استخدمت does و did حتى أعوض عن الأوكسيلاري اللي هو ما موجود أصلاً بالجملة. Miss Sally doesn't participate in the project and Mr. Holmes doesn't either. So, so I combined the sentences uh, by using two with affirmative sentences and by using either with negative sentences. We can have sentences that contain use to and have to. What do we do with such sentences? We also replace them by do. So I say, they used to play video games. And I did too. إذا الجملة الثانية كانت بالأصل تحتوي على used to أيضا، لكن أنا اختصرتها لأول auxiliary uh, اللي هو بهاي الحالة راح استخدم did، لأن أنا درست إنه used to ممكن أعوض عنها بال auxiliary did في حالة السؤال والنفي وحتى في حالة ال combination and compound sentences. He has to work now and she does too. Mary had to go for shopping and I did too. 
your friend didn't have to listen to him and you didn't either. So I have sentences, affirmative sentences combined and we add two for them. Or we have negative sentences and we uh, add either or either actually for them. And we can uh, have a, a, a different uh, form or a different state. When the predicates contrasts affirmative and negative, nothing follows the second verb. So, if one of the sentences is with the other, not two sentences are positive or two sentences are negative. No, one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Nothing follows the second verb. So, the third sentence. الموجود في الجملة لا يليه لا تو ولا either فبهذه الحالة جاك didn't know about decorating but the other boys did انتهى الموضوع ما ضف تو ولا either Martha's sister arrived late but I didn't عندي هنا الجزء الثاني كان هو المنفي وليس الجزء الأول في نفس الحالة ما ضفت لا تو ولا either uh, We have so and neither These two words can also be used instead of two and either The difference is that they immediately follow the connective. They immediately uh, come after but or after and. Uh, the difference is that the word order of the second clause is inverted. يعني ال ال ما تبقى من الجملة الثانية يتم عكسه. يعني إحنا التسلسل المنطقي عندي يكون subject verb. لا من يكون عندي الربط باستخدام so. وneither راح يكون عندي ما بعد ال ال so وneither راح يصير عندي أكو عكس بالجملة فتلقائيا أخلي مجموعة الفعل بالبداية وبعدين مجموعة الفاعل أوكي فخلونا يعني نشوف الأمثلة أدنى so we have sentences like Jack was working with the decorating committee And so was his roommate. So the original sentence was: "شنو كانت الجملة الأصلية؟" Jack was working with the decorating committee. And قبل الآن راح نقول نقدر نقول his roommate was working with the decorating committee. فالاختلاف عندي إن أنا قدمت الفعل اللي هو the verb was على the subject his committee his roommate. Sorry, إلى النهاية. يعني وكأنما نفس الطريقة نتعامل بها مع uh, yes no questions نقدم الفعل على الفاعل uh, بس بدون تغيير شنو عندي بالجملة هو اللي أقدمه فعل رئيسي فعل مساعد whatsoever with uh, neither I will say uh, Jack didn't know much about decorating and neither did his roommate so the same is done I moved the verb before or Uh, before the subject or the verb precedes the subject in this case. In this lesson, we will uh, take other uh, information or extra information about adjective clauses that modify nouns. We studied uh, nouns that modify nouns. We studied Uh, four phrase that modify nouns. We studied four phrase that modify. We also studied in previous lessons that the adjective clause or the, actually the adjective phrase uh, modify nouns and they follow them. Adjective phrases modify nouns and they mo follow the nouns they modify. Here we are going to move for adjective clauses, not only adjective phrases. So take a look at the following examples. This is the watch which my uncle bought for me. This is the city where I live. So you can see that we have moved from using after, before, when, while to use which, where, According to the meaning of the clause, why I am using it. So I'm using uh, this clause in the first example in order to give extra information about the watch. And the watch, I referred to it by which. This is the city where I live because the city is a place I used where. The clause marker is the subject of the clause. This is another state 
uh, where the close marker is the subject of the close يعني uh, عندي هنا العبارتين أو المثالين الأولين ببداية عندي عندي which my uncle bought for me راح تلاحظون أن في هذه العبارة بعد ال close marker which أكو عندي my uncle هو الفاعل bought هو الفعل for me هذه طبعا adjective phrase uh, إجت عندي حتى تصف الفعل تنطيني يعني معلومات إضافية. This is the city where I live. هذه هي المدينة حيث أعيش. Where عندي هنا هي ال close marker I هو subject live هو الفعل. فبهذه الحالة عندي هنا close. لكن هذه ال close نوعها هو adjective close. عبارة وصفية. تحتوي على فاعل. وعلى فعل وعلى close marker راح أجي الآن إلى نوع آخر من ال adjective clauses اللي يكون فيها ال close marker هو الفاعل مثل the other boys who were in the committee الأولاد الآخرون الذين كانوا في اللجنة who were in the committee who هي subject where الفاعل in the committee عندي هنا uh, prepositional phrase Uh, the ones who didn't come last Sunday who أيضا عند هنا هي الفاعل بالنسبة لهذه ال close didn't الفعل و come last day هي طبعا uh, didn't come هي كلها ال ver نقدر نقول ال verb phrase هي العبارة الفعلية و last Sunday هي ال adverb of time so I would like you to pay attention for the difference that we are going uh, to see in the sentences So instead of using uh, only uh, the phrases and the adjectives, we have adjectives as single words, we have adjective phrases, and here we have adjective clauses. Let us move for studying uh, several words and know how can we use them in the sentences and what do they mean. Let's start with each. Each directs attention to the separate members of a group. يعني إنها تشير إلى كل فرد موجود في المجموعة. Each boy had a special job to do. Each student studies grammar in English department. Each is always singular and requires a singular verb. انتبهوا لهذه الملاحظة. each هي دائما مفردة ويكون تطابق الفعل معها فالفعل دائما يكون في صيغة مناسبة للمفرد every means each member of a group تعني كل شخص من ضمن المجموعة we use every plus singular noun To refer individually to all the members of a complete group of something. إذن عندما أستخدم every every تكون متبوعة دائما باسم هذا الاسم المفرد اللي هي تكون متبوعة به يشير بشكل مفرد إلى كل الأعضاء الموجودين في مجموعة معينة. Every boy had to participate. Every employee has a CV. لاحظوا أن بهذه الحالة أيضا عندي الفعل صار بصيغة المفرد لأنه توافق مع الاسم الذي جاء بعد every so every plus a singular noun it is also followed by a singular verb we are going to move for all all means whole entire it stresses the concept of a unit It is used before plurals and uncountable nouns. إذا تستخدم قبل الأسماء الجمع والأسماء الغير معدودة. أخلي في بالي إذا معلومة مهمة إذا إجى عندي اسم جمع راح يكون شيء الاستخدام وإذا إجى بعدها اسم غير معدود راح يكون عندي شيء مختلف. It can be followed by of of sorry. فهذا أيضا أخلي في بالي. All the boys worked hard. I can say all the boys. I can say all of the boys worked hard. All the students study hard. لاحظوا students جمع study 
وراها فعل تناسق أو توافق مع الاسم الجمع They did all the work in one day أو they did all of the work in one day وعندي أيضا عكس all عندي not all which means part يعني من أقول not all معناها ليس الكل فإن معناها جزء من هذا الكل Not all the students study hard إذا نفس الصيغة نفس الطريقة كل ما هنالك إنها تكون مسبوقة بنوت وراح تنطيني معنى مختلف للأداة أو للكلمة all لوحدها Not all the boys were on the decorating committee فبهاي الحالة اختلف عندي معنى all فبدل ما كانت تدل إلى المجموعة بأكملها not all انطتني معنى الجزء أوكي الجزء من هذه المجموعة طبعا على مر هذه الدروس الماضية والآن الذي الكلمات اللي أخذناها في هذا الدرس we have compound words كلمات مركبة على غرار الجمل المركبة التي تدمج مع بعضها عندي compound words we use any every with some with other words okay for to to form compounds with other words like someone anybody no one everywhere you can check page 151 in your book you have extra information and extra examples regarding compound words these are very important i would like you to memorize them it's the only way you can use them correctly Let's take extra information about any. We have studied any as uh, an, uh, a quantity term, okay? Uh, beside being an expression of a quantity, uh, any also means it doesn't matter which one. يعني هي تعني أنه لا يهم من المقصود. Uh, إذن هي ليست مستخدمة للإشارة المباشرة للشخص أو uh, لكمية أي كمية. This is the usual meaning of any when it is used in affirmative statements. إذن عندما يعني إحنا درسنا إن any مع الكميات تأتي مع الكلمة جمل المنفية. لكن عندما تأتي مع جمل المثبتة فراح يكون المعنى مختلف. راح لا تدل على الكمية تدل على أي شيء. Parents may visit their sons any Sunday. فصارت عندي هنا ليست إشارة الكمية. Any father may visit his son's room. Anyone can learn to decorate. فصارت عندي الإشارة مختلفة باستخدام any وليس فقط إشارتها إلى الكميات. Let's take uh, other information regarding the word one. One means number one. This word is used in two ways. As an definite pronoun, one means any or every person. This is a very formal use. We see it in writing as in one must eat to live. But in conversation, uh, these uh, uses are, or actually we do not use one in this sense while we speak. We use it uh, formally in writing. The second use for one is mentioned in your books on page 152. Sorry, I didn't include uh, this, uh, the second use for one in this uh, slide. It is used to avoid repetition. So, it is often substituted for a noun or a noun phrase. When used in this way, it has a plural form once. So, يعني كلمة one, إما أنها تأتي طبعا بمعنى رقم واحد وبهذه الحالة الاستخدام الأول يكون الاستخدام الرسمي إلها الذي يستخدم في الكتابة ولا يستخدم كثيرا في المحادثات اليومية ويشار فيها إلى يعني indefinite person pronoun يعني بشكل عام نتحدث بها يعني هي نقدر نقول ضمير عام للتحدث فهذا هو الاستخدام الأول أما الاستخدام الثاني is to avoid repetition ل تفادي التكرار ولهذا هي يعني تحل محل اسم او عباره اسميه 
وبهذه الحالة أيضا ممكن أن يكون عندي ones أوكي يكون عندي plural لأن أنا تلقائيا ممكن أقول one وقصدي شخص أو ones وقصدي مجموعة أشخاص أو أشياء So uh, this is the second use of one uh, So I would like you to pay attention for the uh, A, B, C uses of one and I have C on page 152 as well. Once is not used immediately following plural demonstratives, quantity expressions, or possessives. It is used when uh, another modifier stands between. So we can get sentences like, do you need any ties? Yes, I need two. If I say, I need a couple, two. Salesman will say, or actually, it is a complete conversation. Uh, I would like you to take a look for this conversation. Uh, and if you didn't understand it, it's okay. We can uh, negotiate and, you know, uh, speak about it or talk about it later in the following lectures. Let us move for another uh, item. It's about other. Other is used as a modifier or an, ad an, an, uh, an adjective, okay? And it is also used as a pronoun. As an adjective, other stands before the word it modifies. So it works like an adjective. الصفة تسبق الموصوف. فأذر نفس الحالة ممكن هذا استخدمت كصفة لنتجي قبل الموصوف. The plural form is never used in modifying position. صيغة الجمع من عدها اللي هي others مستحيل انها تجي بموقع الفا... الصفة فأقدر أقول another boy وأقدر أقول other boys another day other days I have the simple form other I have the singular form another I have the plural form others as a pronoun كضمير other fills the subject or object position in a sentence pattern or the noun position in a phrase or clause. ممكن تجي إذن other ك بموقع الفاعل أو الفعل إذا تجي هنا بكضمير وممكن إنها تجي بموقع المفعول به أو في موقع الفاعل بالنسبة لل الclauses إحنا درسنا الclauses إنها تحتوي أحيانا تحتوي على فاعل فممكن إن يكون هذا الفاعل ضمير وممكن يكون other. Other, another, others. ونخلي في بالنا إنه when other or others is preceded by the عندما تسبق ب the those words indicate the remaining item or all the remaining items of a group. عندما تستخدم other و another قبلها the يعني مسبوقة ب the فهذا راح يدل على كل ما تبقى من مجموعة معينة فأقدر أقول The other boys on the committee إذن كلهم All except مجموعة معينة The others were working inside إذن البقية كانوا يعملون في الداخل معناها البقية كانوا يعملون في الداخل أكو أشخاص ما كانوا يعملون في الداخل فإذن هنا نحن نشير فيها إلى ما تبقى من مجموعة معينة. Never use the before another. إذا another لا يستخدم قبل هذا. فقط عندي others و other ممكن تكون إنها مسبوقة بذا. لاحظوا الطلاب إن كل هذه الملاحظات اللي ذكرناها سابقا هي مشابهة لملاحظات أخرى مرت علينا بالدروس الماضية عن معنى كلمات معينة وطريقة استخدامها في الجمل. Uh, I would like you to pay attention for what we have on page 152. The information related to one. I was only the first slide. The first A. We have B and C. B is not a problem. We have C, which is not used immediately after the names that are used to refer to. بإمكانكم أن تطلعوا من عليها وإذا كان أكو مشكلة في فهمها بإمكاننا أن نوضحها أكثر بالتفصيل in another lecture Thank you very much very much for listening I wish you all the best and I would like you to pay attention for the content of this lecture 
Thank you very much.